What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes. Today, we're returning to the Edelac -like series where we break down the styles of famous photographers, movies, or creators, and try to replicate that color grading in post edition with the only purpose of learning how to color grade. Now, the style that we're gonna break down today is Ethan Barber. Now, this style for street and architectural landscape was suggested by one of you guys by Chris Sosa in the comment section on a previous video. So if you guys have any other suggestions or profiles that you want me to break down, put it down in the comment sections and I'll check them out. So first of all, we're going to jump into Instagram and check out some of the examples of his style to know what we're going to do when we jump into Lightroom, edit a photo and create a preset out of it. So let's start. So here we have Ethan's profile on Instagram, ethanbarber.co, if you want to go and follow him. And down here you can find the link to his website where he has his own personal preset shop. So if you're only interested in having his look, the best way you can do it is just buying a preset directly from the creator. Remember that the purpose of my tutorials is to learn how to color grade and we're only using these profiles from famous people. For example, he has half a million followers as an example to create the exercise of color grading. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's look at his feed. Now, in general terms, we can notice that everything is for either street photography or architectural photography. And we can notice that all of the images, it doesn't matter if it's winter, summer, or autumn, we can notice that it always has this very warm feed. Sometimes it's more intense and contrasty like we see in these autumn photos. And if you scroll down just a bit, we can notice these images where it's a lot more creamy and it's a flatter exposure. Now the style varies, also the color that he adds varies. Sometimes it's more towards the oranges, sometimes it's more towards the yellows and even more a bit towards the greens in some cases. But without exception, all of the images in his feed always have a warm tone added and that's done in color grading. So as you can see, Ethan has many variants on his style. Now, in order for this video to not be too long, we're just gonna concentrate on two specifics. The first one is gonna be this one, which is more of a desaturated and flat looking style. Now, this one, first of all, before we pay attention to the color grading, look at the exposure and contrast. This image was shot at midday. Therefore, we should have the highest amount of contrast. We should be losing a lot of information in the shadows, but also in the bright parts. Opposite to that, we can see a lot of detail in the clouds. That's telling us that he's bringing down the highlights. And then the shadows, for example, the leaves and the foliage of the tree have loads of detail. He's putting up the shadows so we have a flatter exposure. So this is the beauty of raw digital photography where you have loads of information to play around and you can bring back a lot of information from dark parts of the image. So this image is very flat in terms of the exposure. He's reducing the difference between the bright parts and the dark parts of the image, so it's a flatter exposure. Now, in terms of color, we can notice that all the image, whether it be highlights, midtones, or shadows, all is painted with this very subtle, warm tone, making this image look a bit sepia and a bit retro. So that is done in color grading, have to keep that in mind. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that this style is the most repeated on his feed. And in particular, pay attention to the lack of blues, the lack of aquas or greens in these images. So basically, he's desaturating all the cold tones from the image, so the warm tones take more relevance. You can see it in the sky, how it's basically yellow. The mountains in the background should be in the aquas. It's also very desaturated. And the greens are also a bit desaturated, but most of all, they're taking towards the warmer tones. So we have to keep that in mind when we start color grading in HSL in particular. So in my opinion, this is the style that he uses in most of his images. Sometimes it's a bit more intense. Sometimes it's a bit more desaturated. And in this case, you can see why this style is created for landscape photography or street photography and not for portraits. This is a version of the preset, which is a bit more intense, but just pay attention to the skin tones what happens when you combine them with the color green, the yellow that he adds in color green, they basically turn into this Simpson-like color, like they had jaundice or something like that, and it's horrible. So this preset isn't uh, something that I would recommend for portraits in particular. Now, if you jump into his website, you can find the before and afters of his presets. And this is basically what we want to do. This is the summer preset. I want to change this image that has a very nice and natural contrast and exposure into this warm image that has loads more information in the shadows and bright parts of the image and this overall warm cast. So I think our analysis was correct. This is what we're going to do in Lightroom. So this style is a bit flatter and desaturated, a bit more subtle. Now, the other one that we're going to do is a bit more punchy and contrasty and vibrant, which is the autumn preset. Here we have these images and immediately you can notice how the blacks are basically pure blacks. They're not raised, they're not grayish or anything like that. And the shadows are losing a lot more information compared to the previous examples. As well, we have a lot more saturation in the greens, in the yellows, in the reds, 
and in particular we're retaining that warm tone throughout the image but now it's combining with the saturation added into these autumn leaves. Now in this image of Central Park there's something very interesting that's happening. Notice how there's little to no difference between the yellows, oranges, reds and greens. So he's creating a homologous, this is the world palette where there's little difference between the warm tones and this is telling me that in camera calibration he's tampering with the sliders of the RGB to make these colors seem very similar to each other. So if you watched my video on camera calibration, I explained how to do this, but in essence, he's trying to make uh, all the greens, all the vegetation have little difference in the colors. So they have a very similar color palette. We can see that this style is a bit more punchy. We can see how there's clipping or loss of information in the bright parts of the image in the reflections on the windows. And opposite to that, in the shadows, we have underexposure, losing a lot of information. So it's a lot more punchy and contrasty than the first style. Now, in this image in particular, you can notice that something strange is happening with the leaves. They're very vibrant, they're very yellow and luminescent, and basically they're popping out of the screen. And this is something that occurs when you tamper with the saturation in camera calibration. You have to keep that in mind. We want the yellows to really pop on our image. Then this style is very useful as well for street photography. As you can see in these examples, it just works perfectly. It looks beautiful, a bit more punchy, contrasty. It's more of an, I would say more of a film look, maybe a Kodak Gold similar, but it looks just fantastic as well. So creators, I think I have everything I need to replicate his color grading. Today, we're gonna create two presets. First of all, the summer version, a bit more flat and desaturated, and then we're gonna use that one as a basis to create the autumn variant, a bit more contrasty and vibrant. So let's jump into Lightroom, but before that, as always, I'm gonna remind you that these two presets that we're gonna create I'm gonna add them to the Airlight -like preset pack V2. Link up here if you wanna check it out. In that preset pack, you're gonna find all the presets that we've created throughout the series in this season. So if you wanna skip my tutorials, that's the best way. Also, you're gonna find there my personal presets, my personal lots that I use every single day to edit my photos and videos. So if you can support me, that's the best way you can ensure that I continue to upload videos for you guys because we all know that YouTube AdSense, well, it basically plays close to nothing. So if you can support me, that's the best way. If not, no worries guys, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. Okay, creators, here in Lightroom, I have this little collection that I made. The ones in green are gonna help us to create or emulate the autumn preset, a bit more punchy, vibrant, and contrasty. And the ones at the top at more sunny days are gonna help us to create the summer preset. So I'm gonna start off by that one. You can select this image, D on your keyboard to move to the develop module. So first of all, we're gonna nail down the exposure and contrast. Now, the way that we're gonna do this is with the basic corrections and with the tone curve. Now for this tutorial or for any tutorial, I like to skip temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast. These four general sliders, I like to leave them at zero, not include them in the preset, because these, these are the sliders that I'm gonna use to compensate any image that is maybe taken badly on field. So let's say I took it with a higher shutter speed that I should, and this image is underexposed, I would use the exposure tool to compensate. If maybe the white balancing is off, I will use the temperature and the tint to correct that. So these, I'm gonna leave them at zero. I'm gonna start off with highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now highlights and whites are quite different. Highlights are more in the mid ranges and then whites control the brightest parts on our image. The same thing occurs with shadows. Meanwhile, blacks control the darkest parts on our image. So I'm gonna nail back the highlights so we have more information in the bright parts of the image. Not to the minus 100, this is completely unnatural. Maybe around the minus 20 is gonna be enough just to achieve a bit more detail in the bright parts of the image. And then opposite to that, the shadows, I'm gonna pull them up to achieve more detail in dark parts of the image. So away, again, not too high, maybe a plus 27 is gonna be enough. Next up, whites, I'm just gonna leave them like that. But blacks, I am gonna bring them back just a bit, just to retain a bit of that natural contrast around the minus 10. Next, before we jump into the tone curve, we have the presence tab. Now the presence tab, I normally, if you watch my tutorials, like to leave it at zero or drag it towards the negatives. So if we drag an image towards the negative, you can notice how the digital sharpness of the digital sensor is greatly reduced and we have a softer, more organic image. But in some cases, in one case in particular, when we're taking photos of architecture, I like to move it towards the positive so we have a more of a contrasty and dramatic image. This isn't the example because this image isn't showcasing any architecture, but let's say, let's move into this one. And if you didn't know, I am an architect, so I like to take photos of details in the structures. So right here, for example, we have this bridge in New York. If I move the clarity and the texture up, notice how the architectural structure of this bridge really starts to pop a lot more compared to the original one. So this is the one case that I like to use positive texture and clarity when I'm shooting something like this. So 
for this tutorial for this preset i'm not going to go too high and i'm just going to move the texture just a bit up just in case we have any details that we want to emphasize maybe a plus 10 percent and then if we have any image or any case where we want to ump up the clarity we can do that manually then the other value that we're going to move is the haze now as the name says this one is created for landscape photography when you have a hazy background and you want to cut the haze out you're just going to move towards the positives and your image will greatly have more contrast now in this case i'm going to go towards the negatives as you can see if i go ever so slightly towards the negatives our blacks start to gray out and have a desaturated image but also we have this halation like effect appearing on the image this is horrible obviously we want to go just to slightly towards the negatives around the minus seven just to add a bit more gray and desaturation into our entire image okay now to finalize our exposure and contrast we're going to use the tone curve now the tone curve is a hugely powerful and popular tool because you can use it to correct your image you can basically do what we did in basic corrections over here you can use it to create specific looks and you can even use it to color grade your image with the rgb channels as you can see it's a very complex tool with a lot of tools in it so if you want to name that tutorial about the tone curve link up here to that video in there i go into detail today i'm not going to cover everything because this video isn't about the tone curve also any other tool that we use like calibration hcl color grading the video when we reach that part is going to pop up in the banner over here so if you want to check it out links up there okay so in the tone curve what we want to do is bring up the shadows and also fade out the blacks so we're going to move this dark point over here this one controls the dark parts of our, of our image just bring it up above the diagonal just around here and if we go to the extreme, you can notice how the blacks start to gray out and we have more information in the shadows, but this is way too high, just around here. And it's gonna be zero on the X axis. This is the input and the output is the Y axis. We just moved it up to the 15%. What we're doing here is just raising the blacks. So they're a bit more faded out, but also consequently raising a bit of the shadows. So we have more detail in dark parts on our image. Then this point controls the whites. I'm gonna drag it down below the diagonal ever so slightly the output is going to be 243 and what I did here is just ensuring that we don't have any pure whites on our image any clipping or anything like that and dragging a bit of the highlights down as well so this isn't really a curve we just moved two points and we didn't add any in the middle but what we're doing right here is just tilting our exposure towards more of a flatter look so with Y on our keyboard we can see the before and after in the exposure and contrast and this is before bit more of a contrasty punchy look and now we have more of a controlled and flatter exposure notice the difference in brightness and also the difference on detail that's appearing in the dark parts on our image so now we're going to move into the color grading okay for this first preset we're going to skip camera calibration and hsl for the time being we're going to move down to color grading now color grading is a very powerful tool because it allows us to apply a color to the shadows to the midtones or to the highlights but in this case we're going to start off by the global color wheel which is all the way at the right and here what we're going to do is just paint the image with a warm tone. So right here you can move the point to the border to add more saturation and move it around the color wheel to find the color that you want. Now this will depend on you guys. You can go for more of a greenish yellow, more of a more natural yellow, more of an orangey tone. It all depends on what preset you want to replicate. But in this case, I'm going to go more towards the yellows over here. The value is going to be or the hue is going to be 54 and the saturation is way too high of course we want to drag it down i'm going to go around the plus 15 is going to be enough something like that and now we've painted our entire image with a very slight warm cast now this isn't quite enough so i'm going to copy these settings by right click the wheel copy settings and then in the highlights i'm going to apply the settings once again and then i'm going to do the same in the midtones the shadows there's no need we only have that warm tone in the shadows and right here, what you're looking at is how you can layer up these color wheels to achieve more of a dramatic look. So right here we have our original image and now the one on the right has this very nice subtle, but it's there, warm and yellow tone. Again, you guys can choose whatever hue you want. Now we're going to move into HSL to find detail a bit of the colors. Remember that the blues, the aquas are very desaturated in this style. So we're going to move to the saturation tab over here. I'm going to drag the aquas to around the minus 15 and also the blues just to desaturate them just a bit and also we're just going to nail back a bit of the greens towards the negatives around the minus eight it's going to be enough then in hue another thing that i'm going to do is just change the greens and the yellows more not towards the emeralds otherwise this is we obtain these artificial greens we want to go towards the negatives to more of a yellow cast 
something around these lines, around the minus 25 is going to be enough, just ever so slightly switching them more to warmer tones. Okay, so the preset is looking quite nice. This is the before and after. One thing that is missing is the film grain. Now, I know I didn't mention this in the analysis, but all of his images, without any exception, have a very natural and organic looking film grain, similar to the ones that we see in different film stocks. So I'm going to drag down all the way to the effects. I'm just going to add some quantity around the 30%. And as you can see, if I zoom in, it's noticeable, but if I zoom out, you can't really see the grain. So I'm just going to amp up the size, maybe around 50%. And now we have a very natural and very nice looking film grain. Okay, so now this preset is complete. Now let's save it, apply it to another photo and see if we need to modify it or if we did a good job. So to save a preset, we're gonna go to the left panel over here, hit the plus sign, create a preset. And under here, remember that exposure, white balance and contrast, we want to unmark them just as lens corrections transform. And we want to mark grain in the effects. Okay, so we have this image of these old dudes with the Tower of the Sun at the background, the Torre del Sol in Seville. Let's apply the preset over here. And immediately you can notice how the blues are mostly desaturated and we have those warm tones in the highlights. Then the aquas are also gone and it's looking quite nice. We have that green, which is more towards the oranges, more towards the yellows. And this preset is looking fantastic for these types of photos in bright sunlight. How about over here? Let's apply the preset. And there we have it. We can see the change in the white Originally we had this bluish white and now we have this yellow white, which is looking quite nice. Also this preset is quite subtle in terms of the saturation of the yellows. So you could use it for portraits. It doesn't affect the skin tones too harsh, too harshly, but it's looking quite nice. The greens more towards the yellows rather than towards the cool tones. Finally, we have these ladies in the carnival in Seville, the summer preset, and it's looking quite nice. Maybe in this case, I would compensate with the exposure. As you can see, they're at zero because we didn't include them in the preset. Just pull the exposure up just a bit and there we have it. Very natural, very warm and beautiful looking preset. Okay, so that's the summer preset. Now let's create the autumn variant. I'm gonna use this same preset as a basis so we don't have to start from scratch. So here we have this image in autumn. I'm gonna use that one. No, no, this one because we have a broader spectrum of colors over here. I'm just gonna apply the summer preset first of all. I'm gonna work on from here. Now, first of all, this image is a bit dark, so just pull up the exposure just a bit. And the first thing I want to do is add more contrast to this preset. This variant was a lot more punchy with harsher contrast in the blacks and also in the highlight. So I'm going to reset the tone curve. Just right click, reset all channels. And immediately you can notice how the blacks are pure blacks and we have more darker shadows. And then the whites have a bit more luminance to them. Okay, so that's it for the exposure and contrast. Now let's move down into the color grading and we're gonna start off with camera calibration. Now this tool is unique, it's fantastic because it allows us to control the essence of our images, the RGB. Every single pixel that you're seeing on your phone, in your computer, in your photos, are controlled or are created by the red, the green and the primary, mixing together to create the exposure and the colors that you're watching. Some in lesser sense, some with more blue, some with more red. So the RGB is the essence of digital photography. So right here we have the red, the green and the blue primary and these will control the overall colors on our image. Now remember that in the examples we saw that the differences between the greens, the reds and the oranges were very subtle or very uh, close together in one of the examples and with camera calibration we can achieve that. So just as an example, look what happens when I move the red primary towards the warm tones, the green primary towards the warm tones as well and the blue primary towards the warm tones as well. Notice how the green is basically now an orange color, the reds are orange, the yellows are orange. Every single color in our vegetation is now in the same tone, the same palette as in the other ranges. So what we did right here is just homologize all the vegetation into a single tone. Now this is obviously way too harsh. We're going to reset these values and going to be a bit more conservative. The one thing that you need to understand about camera calibration is that by altering one of the sliders, you're altering every other pixel on your image because all of them are composed in a lesser or in a larger sense by, let's say, the blue primary. But some colors are affected more by the, each of these sliders. So the colors that are going to be affected more by blue primary is going to be obviously the blues, but the direct opposites as well. It's more of a pull and tug uh, situation over here. So blues are going to affect blues, but also oranges and yellows. Greens are going to affect the greens, but also the reds, and the same thing occurs with the red primary. It's going to affect magentas and emerald greens. So right here, as you can see, we have the greens. If I move the red primary towards the negatives or towards the positives, we're affecting the greens quite a lot. So I'm going to go towards the positives 
just to make them a bit warmer towards the oranges. Then the green primary towards the negatives to make them warmer as well, not too much, but just around the minus 10 is going to be enough. And then the blue primary will affect all of these oranges and yellows that we're looking at in our image. And we're going to go quite heavy around the minus 30, 40%, something around these values. And immediately you can notice the difference, how the greens, how the yellows, everything is tending towards the warmer tones. And they're very similar to each other, nothing too unrealistic, but we are creating the vegetation uh, that is similar to the look that we saw on Ethan's images, where the greens, the yellows and the reds are very similar to each other. Now, the other thing that we're going to do in camera calibration is use the saturation sliders. Now, you remember this image that had these very vibrant or vivid yellows? This is done also in camera calibration by moving the saturation. So right here, we have similar colored leaves over here and want them to really pop. Now, there are two ways we can do this. We can pull the blues that control the yellows as well, pull it up towards the positives and notice how they start to really shine but also we're adding a lot of blue into the image, which is something that we don't want. We want the blues to be completely controlled. So we're gonna reset this value. And instead we're gonna move the red primary towards the positives. I notice how this, this is a sim it's a similar effect where the yellows really start to pop just a bit more. I'm just gonna move it up, not too high, maybe at plus 35, plus 37 is gonna be enough just to make some colors really start to stand out just a bit more. It's a very complex tool. Hopefully I made some sense with it. If not, remember that I already made a tutorial about camera calibration, link up here. But it is a very complex tool that allows us to create some interesting palettes and interesting effects on our color grading. Now, next, color grading, we're gonna leave it just as it is with the same sliders, um, with the same values in the hues, but we are gonna move some values in HSL. So in HSL, in essence, what we want to do is just draw back a bit of the saturation in the blues that we already did around the minus 20, the aquas as well, minus 20, and the greens just scale them back just a bit so they're not dominant in any manner around the minus 10. So this preset is basically complete. Here we have the before and after, and we have an image that has a lot of greens and a lot of cool tones, and now we have an image which is not completely unnatural, but we're really, we're really making emphasis on the autumn colors and in the contrast. So let's save this preset and apply it into other images to see how it performs if we did a good job. So again, to save a preset, left panel, presets, hit the plus sign, create preset. So right here we have this image of my friend Patricio, also in Central Park. Let's apply first of all the summer preset. And as you can see, we have more information, more detail in dark parts of the image and bright parts. And we have a more faded and desaturated effect. Now the autumn variant over here is a lot more punchy, contrasty. We have those autumn colors and it's just looking fantastic. I think we did a good job. How about over here, this image, I shot it in Madrid next to the Royal Palace. We have the summer preset, which should work perfectly over here. Yeah, fantastic with those faded out or desaturated greens, desaturated blues and this warm cast. And then the autumn is just a bit more punchy, a bit more like a film look, and it's looking just fantastic. Finally, let's look at our original image. This is the original image. And over here we have the summer variant. And then finally we have the autumn variant, a bit more punchy, contrasty, and those autumn leaves really start to pop a lot more. And of course, right here, we have a bit of blue creeping in into the shadow. So we can always go into HSL and just draw back a bit of the blues, just a bit more so there's no presence of blues in the dark parts of our image. But in general terms, I think we did quite a good job. So there you have it, guys. This is my interpretation on Ethan Barber's color grading, how to achieve those sepia tones for architectural photography, and then transform that preset into a punchy autumn preset. Now, just a reminder, these two presets are in the Edelike Preset Pack V2, but also the Edelike LUT Pack V2. So I've reconverted these presets for photo into LUTs for video, in case you wanna apply these edits into your videography as well. Link up here to my shop. So that's it for today, guys. Remember, if you liked the video, like, subscribe, all those things. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.